The iPhone 4 is back and it's rocking some 5G. But should you still consider the 12 mini when the SE2 still has so much to offer? Let's get into it. What is going on you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are finally talking about the iPhone 12 mini and I'm sure plenty of you are like, I've already seen a ton of videos out, but I wanted to bring perspective to those that are average consumers thinking about the 12 mini versus the SE2, talking about the price points, the features that they have. And if you already have the SE2, should you feel bad about the 12 mini? Well, I'll just spoiler alert here, no. And for those tech enthusiasts out there who think that this is not a fair comparison, again, we're talking about the average Joe and Jill out there. Now, before I stand up and defend the SE2, what I want to actually um, talk about here is a bit of a prediction when it comes to the casing of the 12 mini. I do think that the SE line is going to stick around. I think it's a great gateway um, from, for Apple to get customers in. However, I think what they're going to do is place an SE equivalent inside of this casing within the next year. So I don't necessarily know that it's gonna be the 12 mini, but I do think it's going to be equivalent to what the SE2 has been bringing to customers um, this last like six, seven months or so. And so I do want to kind of highlight that because the thing is, is that the SE2, it's still very capable. I mean, it is, and it's gonna be capable for a long time. It's gonna be supported for a long time. It is a great device starting at 399. And that's the thing, when we talk about the average consumer here, 399 is a great, very aggressive price point to get people into the ecosystem. The difference with the 12 mini being that it's 699, $300 can be a very big difference for people. And $300 could get you the SE2 and also that for that $300 to get maybe an Apple Watch or some other accessories for your SE2. So being all in at $399 plus another $300 budget to get you some additional accessories you're gonna win here. And again, this is gonna be supported for years. Now, of course, the fit and finish on both of these phones is very nice. The SE2 being a bit more rounded. And for some of you who have stated that, yes, this is a bit of a reheated leftovers of the iPhone 8, I understand it is a little bit heavier. Um, as far as the screen is concerned, it is not edge to edge like the 12 mini, and we'll talk about that. However, it still feels like a premium device whereas the 12 mini also feels like a premium device, but it is more squared off like that iPhone 4 and 5 and 5S that people are really excited to get reacquainted with. So I do, I have to say, I do appreciate uh, the squared off look, uh, especially when it comes to shooting B-roll for YouTube videos. Now, expanding on the fit and finish here and talking about the display, we have the 4.7 inch display, which is a retina display. And with the 12 mini, we have a 5.4 inch super retina XDR display. And so all of that might not mean too much to you. And what I will say is that Apple does a fantastic job with these displays. They're both very bright and very responsive, even at 60 Hertz refresh rate. And I will say that for most of us, unless you're trying to really pixel peep and trying to find the flaws, I think you're gonna have a hard time doing that. I do say that the 12 mini does have a fantastic display, however, someone who is creative and looking at color calibration and, and certain things, not just brightness, but how the colors actually show up on the screen. Now, here's the thing with the, the, the size. Being that this is 4.7 inch display and 5.4, the 12 mini is actually smaller than the SE2 because again, this is edge to edge versus this just being still that old style where we actually have the, the massive notch in it. It's not going to edge to edge. And so it is a little bit more of a larger footprint. And with any weight difference being that the SE2 is coming in at 148 grams versus the 135 grams by the 12 mini, I mean, you notice it you, you kind of notice it if you're really paying attention to it, but I don't think it's gonna put anybody out. I hope not anyway. And of course, speaking of the finish, getting the blue 12 mini, and I'll try to take some color grade off of that, but it, it looks like a blueberry, it really does. So, I mean, most of us are using cases anyway. I have the case off of it just for this video, but if the blueberry bothers you, it's either blueberry or raspberry. And of course, stepping more into my wheelhouse of filmmaking and photography, I will be doing more videos 
of the mini where I actually talk more in detail about the photography and the filmmaking capabilities. However, for both of these, you do have the 12 megapixel cameras on the back. However, you have the wide and ultra wide also with the two times optical zoom on the 12 mini where you just have the wide on the SC2. But as far as uh, the filmmaking capabilities and as far as like just taking photos, both of the cameras are fantastic. I will say that the 12 mini in my, with my eye, I do see some advantages here. And I think it just comes down to the chipset and the development that has occurred, the R&D that has been really talked about in the, in the last several weeks from Apple about what they're doing with these cameras. But I do think that they're very capable. Now, of course, this does have the night mode and I use just the, the baked in, built in camera software, the, the camera app to take the photos just so that I can kind of just compare apples to apples. Again, just kind of using that term, but I typically use a third party app like the Moment Camera app where I have more control, but I wanted to just kind of level the playing field a little bit and just use the built-in camera app because most of you, that's what you're gonna be using. Are you gonna get great photos from both of these phones? Yes. The SE2, mm-hmm. Video, yes, I did a video on that as well. So I think it really comes down to how you're shooting, what you're trying to film, because at the end of the day, it will still look like a smartphone camera, but Apple, I think, is really kind of differentiating themselves when it comes to what these sensors can do. I mean, the camera that I'm filming on right now and the, the camera back there, I mean, these mirrorless cameras, the thing is, is they have bigger sensors, and I'll talk more about that uh, as well in an upcoming video, but they don't have these powerful chips in them to do this amazing processing that occurs, both the SE2 and the 12 mini. And of course, when we're looking at those photos on the displays, we have 625 nits of brightness on both screens. However, the 12 mini does have that HDR max brightness of 1200 nits. But again, when we're talking about social media, creating film and photography for online creation and uploading um, so folks like you can see it, really what it comes down to is that this is the camera that's in your pocket. It can be a great go-to. And ultimately we're not talking about very expensive cameras that have a lot of capability. And so again, if this is your everyday carry, if this is something that is in your pocket, ready to go to take those photos in the moment, you're gonna be fine. And of course, when I'm looking at that display, I also have that face ID functionality um, in the 12 mini and of course, it's fine, and I know plenty of people have referenced the, the whole mask wearing thing in the world, and that's been a challenge. However, I do just love the, the tactile functionality of the home button, I really do. And I was actually getting used to on the SE2, so here when you um, wanna pull up your control center, it's bottom left, and then when you wanna do your notifications, then that's just from the top. However, on the 12 mini, what we have is that if you come up here to the, the battery and cellular connection and you pull down the control uh, center there, and then if you want, so it splits it in, in this notch here. So on the other side where the time is, then you can get your notifications. And you know, I can appreciate all of you out there that are commenting on the videos. I think I've answered everyone that has commented because you need to hit me up in the comment section. I'm either here on YouTube, in the comment section, or on Twitter. That's, you wanna have a conversation with me? Check either one. Now, I think many of you are probably interested in the battery life, so let's actually talk about that. Now, my SE2 has been my daily driver for the last several months. I haven't had any issues. I haven't ever felt like, oh, I need a charger. I mean, especially in the world like where we're working from home, a lot of us, or at least near a charger. Now, if you're out and about, or you're on hikes and you're you know, away for days and you need that additional battery, I get it. As an Android user, I remember not plugging my phone in that night and then waking up the next day and having 30 to 40% battery. I mean, hey, if you want the 12 Pro Max, but still kind of like look like this, I mean, it's, I mean, this is not the 12 Pro Max, it's just a Nexus 7, but still it, the size can be ridiculous versus this 12 mini's footprint. However, let's talk about the battery, the SE2, I tried to work it, I tried to use it more than I normally do, and by about 5.30 in the evening, I was at 3% battery and I had gotten four hours and 45 minutes of screen time, and then I had to plug it in. Moving over to the 12 mini, again, I had to adjust my use case and really use it, 
and I was actually getting over six hours of screen on time. And, and again, this is like streaming Netflix and YouTube and getting on Twitter and uh, of course in YouTube studio quite a bit. I spent a lot of time on the phones to test this out. I didn't wanna just like run a video and just like let it go. Like I wanted to actually use it. I wanted to pick it up and put it down and pick it up again. So I tried to make this as real world as I possibly could. And those are the results that I got. Am I pleased with that type of battery life? The thing is, is that at the end of the day, like I think like if you've been using your phone all day, I, I can understand why some of you may want it to carry you until you go to bed. Okay, that's understandable. But for me, I like to be able to actually put the phone down. I could put it on a charger, get it a little bump before, you know, bedtime. Maybe if I want to check news or social or anything before I go to bed, then that's what I'm going to do. You have to ask yourself, how am I going to use the device? And is the SE2 going to be enough? I mean, for some of you, probably not, but is it worth another $300 starting price, 699 being the 12 mini, is that enough for you? Is that enough to sway you? I mean, for many of you who are budget conscious, thinking about the, the purses and wallets that you are coveting right now, especially in, in this world economic situation we're in, I can understand why that $300 difference can be a big deal. Now, of course, I do need to touch on the whole 5G thing, and I have been getting some 5G every now and again. Now, of course, as far as testing is concerned, it's not, I don't even think it's like real 5G. I have to go find, I have to go look for it. So if you wanna follow me on Twitter, I'm gonna go hunt for some 5G because I know where there are some spots that are saying that they have 5G. So I'm going to look at the maps, I'm gonna try to go to those spots and find some 5G, but even like around my house, it'll pop up 5G, but it doesn't seem like 5G speeds. So if that's a bit of a gimmick for you or the fact that 5G is not going to even be in your area for several years, again, it's probably not worth that extra $300 to invest in it if that's what you're concerned about. And of course, I know I didn't really touch on the chipset, but the A13 chipset in the SE2 and the A14 chipset in the 12 mini very capable chipsets. I do think, I've said this in the comment section, I think that the A13 is gonna come in as sort of the minimum threshold for anyone who wants to do any kind of aggressive work on these phones. And I mean like video editing, which I'm gonna edit some 4K footage like I did on the iPad Air 4, which has the same chip. And then of course the Mac mini is coming in. So that's coming in in the next couple of days. I'm pretty excited about that. However, getting back to the phone, these chipsets are both very capable. I don't think from an everyday use case that you're going to notice a difference. I'm going to do videos on really pushing this device as a 4K editor. Can you just shoot film, do all of this stuff and edit 4K footage on this phone? I'm gonna be coming to you with that. This is what I'm going to be researching for you. But I, I can tell you that it worked on the iPad Air 4. It's gonna work on this phone. All right, the video is probably longer than I had anticipated. What questions do you have for me? Hit me up in the comment section below because that's where I'm hanging out. However, also too, follow me over on Twitter. The, the links are in the description and let's have a conversation over there as well. I am in those spaces the most. Go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking the faces. I'm gonna keep creating content for you here. I really appreciate your time and attention on this one. Go do the things and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.